Welcome to the Cleveland Browns 0-16 rebuild on Madden 18. My name is Mr. Hurricane, and I have an exciting beginning for this episode. We are going to begin this season by signing the 41-year-old Sebastian Janikowski because I want an upgrade at kicker and I found him. So welcome back everybody to the series. It is episode number six and we are getting into the 2019 season here today. But not until we get through the preseason and see how this young roster continues to develop. Thank you for all the support lately. It has just blown me away. I'll talk more about that as the video moves on. But I have made a couple changes to the team as we get set here. I did move one of the centers that I drafted to tackle. I kept McLaughlin at center because he was the smaller of the two. He's like 296 pounds. So it makes more sense for him to be at center, which is usually your smallest offensive lineman. But I moved Spencer Chase from Nebraska out to right tackle. And I think he has the best chance of starting day one, which would mean an upgrade for our offensive line. And it was a tough year to upgrade anything given the fact that I couldn't load my scouting board. Things are really weird. I'm also planning to start Bradley Hayward at defensive end opposite Miles Garrett. I know he has slow development, but he already has great speed, acceleration, finesse. And compared to Emmanuel Ogba, I just think he's a better player. Ogba hasn't really developed that much for us in a short time. And there are other pass rushers I like more, like Reggie McLaughlin, superstar development. I definitely have to move him up on the depth chart. And tangibles are weighing down his overall and whatnot. But I have to get that up for everybody there that's young. Otherwise, I think everything is just about the same. No real surprises right now. I'm not sure how this season's going to go, but I think we're going to go through it very quickly. I want to see how the season begins, and maybe we get into a game, maybe we don't. But I like to just sim things and see what happens. So that's what we're going to do straight away here. Oh, wow. I love that new story. Bill O'Brien. Head scratching move. No, bring back that story. Bill O'Brien leaves in Anton Greenberry to throw three touchdowns in a preseason win. That's what's up right there. We have the defending offensive rookie of the year of the Cleveland Browns, and that's what he's doing. Oh, no. What happened in that first game? What happened here? 30 nothing to the Eagles with 110 yards of offense. Are you kidding me? Oh, Greenberry threw an interception. He threw three passes. That was it. So Kaiser didn't do much in this one. Wow, really rough game. Six for 22? Like, that's pretty good if you're playing baseball. That's not a bad average right there. You're hitting 270. But come on, this is football. You can't be doing that. But hey, we show some resiliency. Granted, the offense was still bad. 272 yards. Maybe our depth is a big concern, so we just keep out Anton Greenberry because Kaiser isn't completing enough passes. And what do we get? Three touchdowns from our now second-year pro, Sharkandrick West. Two fumbles. Come on, man. You're going to get leapfrog on the depth charts, which, by the way, I went and checked how many running backs I have. I'm back at it, guys. Someone needs to stop me. Let me go check the depth chart. I'll show you what I did. I might have a few running backs. I'm not sure how many we're going to have going forward. Uh, Jarvion Williams. I had to sign him. UTSA Roadrunner. There's Tavares Birmingham, who I drafted. Jabril Peppers here at third down back. I think it's still funny that I did that, but I also think it was like the best thing I could have done if I realistically wanted him to be at his best position. But um, moving forward, I know we're going to have some decisions to make at the end of this year with Josh Gordon getting up there in age, which is, you know, 29 Madden plus slow development might be his last year here in Cleveland. We are prepared to move forward, though, with Bell, Corey Coleman, who I think he is uh, having an expiring contract soon. Also have Adam Humphreys, you know, Joe Thomas, you know, that's a year to year deal if he's going to retire or not. And then on defense... Jason McCourty, very old player. What is he, 33, 32? Yep. 10th year, 11th year. So it's going to be an interesting season, I think, just because we have a lot of things moving in the right direction, but what's going to work against us? What are the challenges going to be? 
as we go 2-1 and one here so far in the preseason. Just want to check on the Jaguar game. I think Greenberry is ready for the season, everybody. He is tossing big uh, touchdowns here in the preseason. Deshaun Kaiser, though, not having a very good three exhibition games. So what does that mean for him moving forward? I got into this fourth game here, just the Super Simit, so I could actually see the four-game stats. So Deshaun Kaiser, a little bit better, but I'm really concerned now. Like, is he the best backup now for the team? Is he our best option there? I'm not sure because these performances are pretty bad and I want to see his overall stats now with the four games complete. I think we stayed like perfectly healthy in the preseason too. I think I'm at 20 or 25 injury, whatever it was. I was told to move it to not many injuries going on here around the league it would appear. So let's check on these numbers and just see kind of how different position battles might be shaping out and if anybody should be moving up or down the depth chart. So Anton Greenberry, we're all really excited about him. He had over, he had 41 touchdowns as a rookie for us and became Rookie of the Year. So I think we have a very bright future. Nice games here for Sharkandrick West, not so much for Rob Kelly. Do we start West then and let Kelly come off the bench? Jabril Peppers, third down back. Hope he gets some more touches this year. Come on, now I'm excited about that move. No one here is really standing out at receiver. Nothing big there. What about sacks allowed? Anybody doing terrible? Uh, I guess they don't count those or something. I know that Greenberry didn't get sacked at all. Miles Garrett, we know he's a beast. Three sacks. Three for Dawson Graham as well. Another one of our young pass rushers. We've gotten really young there at the pass rusher. I love drafting them. Don Banks, defensive rookie of the year. Don't forget about that. We know how good he is. And then interceptions, my favorite play in football. We got a few of those. We sure did. Okay, I'll start cutting running backs. I know I have to do that. I'm also going to cut Carl Nassib. I never thought that he would become like a star player or a starter in this series. With 75 strength and just really average to below average ratings across the board. It's just too much of a project. He does have some decent traits. But I think at this point, we do have a lot more pass rushers that I feel good about. Here's Cap Cappy. Uh, he's 27, though. He's older. Maybe I'll cut Cappy then. But I might also just cut Nassib because I like my other players. I think from here, we can also do an interesting move to put Brian Bulaga on the trading block after we traded for him last year. We have more offensive linemen than you really need right now or that you typically see teams have. I'm looking to see, you know, if there's anybody we could cut right now that we don't necessarily need. But I also want to make sure we still have depth on the team. So we have a lot of offensive linemen. We have, we'll have enough defensive ends if I cut Carl Nassib. So I'm going to make that move right now just so he doesn't take snaps away from players I feel a bit better about. And that'll open up a roster spot, actually, so I can make a signing if I want to. We have five linebackers, we have six corners, and five safeties. Aaron Savage, 85 speed, 76 zone, good hit power, good tackle. You're just in the wrong position, my friend. These are the ratings of a strong safety, so I'm going to move him over. We'll probably go down to four safeties on the team, which means I have a couple roster spots to play with. I also have two kickers. So, uh, do we know what Janikowski did here in the preseason? He hasn't gotten a chance to kick in a little while. We see that there. And then these season games, three for four on field goals. Missed one extra point. But, I mean, there aren't a lot of great options right now. Although, in real life, I'm just like, why doesn't a team offer, like, a third-round pick for Justin Tucker? At least you know what you're getting. Although the Ravens, would the Ravens give up Justin Tucker for a three? If Roberto Aguayo goes for a two and then some, because remember it was a trade up, not just a flat second round pick. It was more than that. I really wonder, like, what would be the price on the Ravens to actually give up Justin Tucker or a great kicker? The Packers actually have a cornerback on their practice squad right now. I like to have on our active roster. So Gabe Brazil, 23 years old. Second year out of Virginia. I like the man coverage, zone coverage. It's a nice combination, and he just improves our cornerback depth. 
Brazil was originally an undrafted free agent, 71 overall, pretty solid, so now I'm going to make a cut, and it's probably going to be to Solomon Fletcher. Actually, I can move him to the practice squad, I drafted him. I think from there we're going to let Sharkandrick West open the year as a starting running back. I do like West. I thought Kelly would do a little bit better, but you know we'll see if West does a little bit more in terms of production when we get the season underway here in just a moment. Um, when it comes to center, McLaughlin here, superstar dev. Hard to start J.C. Treader over him, especially as he continues to age. I think even J.C. Treader could go on the trade block, but also I, I still want to make sure I have good depth. And I'm not going to worry about that right now in case of an injury. So this is what the starting lineup looks like right now. Definitely concerned about the secondary and how it didn't really upgrade in this last year. So how is it going to fare when we get to the regular season? And then I'll fill out this practice squad quick. And by the way, I know there are so many of you that are brand new to the channel. This has been a crazy month so far here on this channel especially. Vinny Brace might be the best practice squad quarterback option I can find. Always like to have somebody there, so welcome Vinny. But this has already been, and we are now, it's the 17th of January. This has already been the largest month of subscriber growth on the channel ever. And I only have 15 days of data, so... That tells you just how much things are growing right now on the channel. It's been really exciting. Wow, AJ Jordan, those are good ratings. He is practice squad eligible for probably one more season, but he's just not going to develop. We have four receivers who are better. I want younger receivers on my practice squad if we're going to go that route. And typically for receiver, I want at least either catching or route running to be solid, so around an 80. I don't want to have to work on both. So how about Colton Bradshaw? That'll work. But continue to leave your feedback, continue to leave likes on the video, and subscribe, obviously. We are now, at my last check here, 81.6K subscribers, so the road to 100K is definitely speeding up. We are moving faster than ever before on the channel. Even when I first launched the channel and, you know, sent over people from my main channel who are already subscribed we have already surpassed that growth easily not a bad player here adrian covington we're gonna have some good practice squad players and i think a couple of them are gonna end up getting signed i'd also want a free safety because i just want to shore up some depth there zach shirley let's go for it here so obviously, as you guys might have heard, the Minnesota Vikings won a pretty big playoff game this last Sunday, and I'm a big Viking fan, as you know. So I had a very fun Sunday there watching the Vikings, but also that was the day that this channel broke its subscriber record in one day and its view record at the same time. And then Monday, both of those records were rebroken. Didn't happen Tuesday. But thank you for the tremendous support on this series, on this channel. It has been just unbelievable to begin this year. So thank you very much. I love making content here between the two of my channels. And YouTube is what I do full time. So to see that kind of support means a lot to me. And yeah, I just wanted to express how thankful I am for that. I'm glad that many of you are enjoying this series. It wasn't like a one or two episode wonder we are still going very strong here, and hopefully this episode does strong as well. I'm simming through some games now. We're going to see what's happening with this Browns team as we start 1-0 and get three touchdowns from Anton Greenberry. We have a media question. What does the media want to say? Many folks, including yourself, thought this team would perform better last season, but things did not come together. How do you avoid that again this season? Well... Do we start getting more aggressive? Do we start raising the expectations that Cleveland isn't, hasn't had for a very long time? This is a playoff team and they need to show that every week. Let's go. So obviously, per win, roster rating plus 2%, per loss minus 5%. Just a little added pressure here for the team, but I think they can handle it now. 1-0, Greenberry throws three touchdowns, 28-10. That sounds like a solid way to begin the season to me. 
Offense didn't get a lot of yardage again. Looks like Kaiser got in for a little bit. Greenberry, three touchdowns. We made it tough on Trevor Simeon for the Cardinals. Sharkhandrick West gives us four a carry. That's nice to see. Give Jabril Peppers the ball. I wish I could handle that a little bit more and manage things. Fisher Bell, two touchdowns. He was very good as a rookie as well. Forget what his numbers were. So simming through week two, we now move to two and oh. Four touchdowns from Anton Greenberry, which means seven touchdowns to open the season. Maybe 41 was just like the floor and he's gonna raise it even more this year. That's incredible. Only held the Raiders to 241 yards. Derek Carr, look at those numbers. Those are ridiculous. Greenberry, seven touchdowns, no picks. Sharkhandrick West, over four yards a carry. Let's go. Three touchdowns for Corey Coleman. And one for Tevin Coleman. Four Coleman touchdowns and one for Josh Gordon. Who's making things tough here on the defensive side then? Sacks for Bradley Hayward, that new starting defensive end. And then Travis Evans. I like seeing my young players on here get it done. It's back. It's returned. Here we go. I can scout again. I'm so excited. What do we want to scout this year, guys? I think that I'm going to go straight to cornerback in case it happens again or any issues arise. Yes, three first round corners, three second round corners, one million three round corners. Let's go. I'm going to find out just the top skills for all of the ones that I can here. And we saw some B-plus man. That's what I'm looking for typically. And so two options here in the first round. Lindsey Stokes, late first round prospect, and Rashad Rager from Tennessee. And to 3-0 we go. One player has regressed. Who? That would be Robert Kelly, under four yards per carry. Wow, they minus two awareness just for one game under four when he was at four in the first two games of the year. Not on many carries, but that's kind of aggressive. We're scoring some good points to begin this year too. The scoring offense has definitely improved. 417 yards at the same time. And actually Dalton did okay in this game, it would appear. No picks respectable yardage Sharkhandrick West by the way now 4.7 a carry every game has been north of four. Ooh, you know what that is regression worthy right there 27 on 12 and a fumble we get Jabril Peppers a touchdown though and Anton Greenberry a rushing touchdown let's go 3-0 Josh Gordon gets a score this team right now they're looking solid and it wasn't like we made a lot of upgrades between last year and this but we're seeing results. Remember, 6-9-1 a year ago. Let's go back to these cornerbacks now and just scout these second ratings. And we got some good stuff here. Okay, Cedric Todd, he's another winner. Just no B-plus man, but BBB, we'll take it right there. You know, LeVar Ball's a big fan of those top three skills right there. We got Spencer Lockley, no, B-plus press, you can jam, but after that, it's over. So I guess that makes Spencer Lockley like a smaller, shorter Brandon Browner when he had that year with the Saints where he had uh, the most penalties, I think, in NFL history. That was a fun season. Not if you were a Saints fan, obviously, but, you know, I had some enjoyment out of it. All right. Not getting a lot of hits here down the board. That's kind of the case this year with cornerback. It's one of those positions that if you're going to address it, you're not going to sit around to do it. So what do we have for linebackers? Four first round linebackers. Might be a good year to go defensive tackle. We have nine projected in the first two rounds. We could use some depth there or someone to challenge either Danny Shelton or Larry Ogunjobi. And you know, when we get good players, it's not like you can keep them all. That's not a thing. The teams that keep all their free agents don't have enough good ones. I mean, salary cap makes it hard to keep these cores together. So, you know, I think Shelton's a free agent after this year. We'll have to make some tough decisions, potentially, depending on cap. Obviously, when you have a cheap quarterback on a rookie contract, that makes life so much easier because it's $20 million cheaper than someone else is paying. Oh, what? 
What? I'm not trying to relocate. I've never seen that. I thought relocation was off. Is the NFL forcing the Browns out of Cleveland? Where's relocation settings? Normal. Hmm. I'm not sure if I should leave this on or off. Let's leave it. Let's see what happens. I'm not moving the Browns. I'm not trying to. I'm just not going to click on that because I feel like bad things might happen if I click on that. So we're 4-0. I didn't even check to see if we won, but of course we did. 28-21. Six wins a year ago. We're on our way to destroying that number here if we keep it up. Look at that. 228 yards allowed by the defense. Anton Greenberry, three touchdowns, his first interception. And now RG3 with uh, the Indianapolis Colts. Sharkandrick West, a little bit less yardage. Robert Kelly bounces back a little bit. And then Josh Gordon, a couple touchdowns. I'm curious, after four weeks of action, what are we ranked in just certain stats? I just want to see this flash right here. 16th in offense, average. We are third in defense, which is so much better than I thought it'd be. I figured if something was going to be top five, top ten, it'd surely be the offense, but that's not the case. We're second in points allowed. So with the season one quarter over, here are the numbers so far. Anton Greenberry, just brilliant. Not many yards per game, but I guess he doesn't really need to. He's already becoming a superstar player. Sharkandrick West. How about this? I think it was the right decision to let him become the starter, even if it's only temporary. At receiver, Josh Gordon, four touchdowns. Not any big standout numbers, but there are just too many mouths to feed for that to happen. That's happened on a lot of my teams over the years in series. I just end up with too many players I want to get the football to couple sacks here for Hayward, Collins, Garrett, and then two picks for Travis Evans. Looking at the comments on last episode too, it was pretty reoccurring that a lot of you just enjoy kind of the process of building the team and the pace is definitely a big deal. Moving by quickly, we get to more off seasons, we get progress faster. And I do like that as well. That's one of the big things I like about doing this kind of a series is that you get to just move rapidly and you don't have to dwell on anything that's bad and you can just move on from one thing to the next and things have been quite smooth today not a great pass rusher class it would appear not at all that might be one of those things you go to free agency for just taking a look here at the defensive tackles and this is one you can find great depth at Let's see, if we want to replace, like, Danny Shelton with a nose tackle, let's check out Deshaun Chamberlain. Ah, lost it there at the end. No standouts. If I see a defensive tackle, I want to see his block shed to begin. Or somewhere in the top three. How about Wilfred Scott? Eh, power moves, all right. More regression here as we head into our bye week. I didn't see what we did. Now, Sharkandrick West goes down a little bit. I don't want to see that. He began the year so well. And I hope that moving forward, as we did lose this game to the Rams, a high-scoring game. But I hope that we get the Sim Engine reworked in Madden 19. I want to see a lot more variation in stats, especially because it's you don't see like running backs getting like 150-yard games or anything that uh, would spice things up. So, pass defense, not as strong today. Anton Greenberry, good, but just not enough in this game. Did a pretty good job, it looks like, against their ground attack. And then David Njoku, Fisher Bell, Corey Coleman, a lot of standouts here. But I think the cornerbacks are what held us back in this game with all the targets that the Rams have. So, maybe the deeper offenses are the ones that are going to really expose us. And as I think about what else I want to do with like this rebuild style series, like, yeah, there's more I could do on Madden 18. I can go back to old Maddens. But one game I definitely want to check out is NFL Head Coach. I have talked about that game for years now, potentially like doing something on it. But my biggest hang up was always that like the gameplay I didn't find very fun. And if gameplay is not really what everybody's looking for and they just want the, the rebuild experience, which I'm cool with, even if we just pop into a couple games every now and then, like, 
head coach would probably work. I've never spent a lot of time in head coach, but I've heard so many good things about how deep some of the systems are that I think yeah, it's, you know, it fit like a glove for what I like to do. And I think it would definitely fit into this rebuild style series because I like things that are more complex for football. I want that. I'm not sure what to scout. Never hurts to check out these early round receivers. Hello, Dion Mack. 21 years old. If he doesn't have superstar development, I'll be shocked. But guess what? He wouldn't need it to become a superstar caliber player. That's maybe the best top three I've ever seen for a wide receiver. I mean, you'd like to see route running potentially there. Maybe instead of catching traffic. But come on, look at that. You know, we can look at some of the early round running backs too, just because we don't know what our future is there. So I get to scout running backs. Devin Favors. Power backs have been very good in Madden last couple cycles. Let's see, Andre Ayers. Uh, and I got a lot of feedback also saying that many of you like the pace at which this moves. It's fast. It's faster than how I normally do franchise. But it's not like I'm trying to get it all done in a half hour video or something like that. That's really not my style. It would just... It, not, it wouldn't be the way I like to do things. I'm all about kind of the journey here as well as the destination. And that's why I think a lot of my content ends up being so fun. Because we always get a fun kind of uh, journey out of it. Corey Wooten. Not to be confused with Corey Wooten. Former defensive end of the Lions, Bears, Vikings. Did he ever play for the Lions? Play for the Bears, play for the Vikings. He went somewhere else after that. Corey Wooten. Let's go to left outside. Oh, Grant Valentine hits. He's got good block shed, tackling, great run stopper. He's going to go early off the board, though. What else do I want to check out? Maybe backup quarterback. That wouldn't hurt at all. Morgan Daughtry. Well, no. Not going to draft him. I know that. Addison Jensen? Probably not. So, there's always, like, other quarterbacks out there I can potentially sign. You know, the, the Matt Barkleys of the world, basically, are always out there. Oh, man. Took another L in Week 7. Wow, what's happened to the Steelers? We're going to check on them here in a moment, but we lose to Seattle, giving us back-to-back -back losses. Please don't let it turn into more than that. I'd like for us to maybe uh, sit in on a... An interesting matchup for next episode so I'm still gonna sim some games here but this time the defense of Seattle shut us down and we couldn't stop Russell Wilson as you can see Duke Johnson revenge game man didn't score a touchdown but still held us under three yards at carry looks like a an 84 yard touchdown to Tyler Lockett so the top player in the entire draft is actually a running back and there's an A minus, A minus, B plus combination for Lynn Boyd. If he runs fast, there is your Leonard Fournette esque prospect. This man's name is Tank Ogletree. I have to scout him. Oh man, C plus zone. They call this a first round safety. To me, that requires like an obnoxious combine to be a first round caliber player. I mean, C-plus zone is fine, B pursuit, but that's just typically not a first-round combination to me. Malcolm Minnis. You see, his ratings are pretty similar. What about some mid-round players here? I'm looking at receivers, just thinking about life potentially after Josh Gordon this year. Oh, a B-plus catch. I got so lucky I scouted the right player right away. Jawan Doyle. If he's a mid six round talent, that to me tells me bad route running, bad um, intangibles, but really good catching. So I don't mind that as a mid round, late round prospect at all. And I have to scout the only first round defensive end prospect here, Denard Wynn. Oh man, that is not a good pass rush class at all. How about Griffin Armstrong at six, seven? No. We get back in the win column, but do suffer an injury, and it is to Jason McCourty, making an already thin secondary even more. So, we do get the bounce back victory here against the Steelers. 
I want to get us to at least mid-season and see, you know, can we get to six wins in half the time it took us last year? There's a good run blocker. Pass block is low. Bronson Drew. We drafted a defensive, uh, or a, not defensive, anything, and a guard that I did like a lot. So we do have a little bit of depth there. Just always doing my due diligence here, essentially. What about as we get into third round prospects? I'm not sure what to scout right now. I guess I can keep looking at some of these defensive ends. Jelani Belton. Thankfully, we already found some good defensive ends because this is going to be a year where it's tough. And at the halfway point, we do not make it to six wins. We're five and three. And the regression this week also goes to Sharkhandrick West. So he is beginning to slump, it looks like. So we're 5-3 after losing to the Bengals, a team that was below 500. We beat them earlier, we sure did, but this time they beat us by two touchdowns. We have a lot of road games coming up on the schedule, it looks like. I think this team can go to the playoffs this time around. I just hope that we play more like the first four games than the second four games. Greenberry, worst start of the year, it appears. Two interceptions, no scores. And then West, 3.6. How about at receiver? And Joku, I think he's having a big year. I keep seeing his name up there. So now halfway through this season, Anton Greenberry not quite on his pace for 41 touchdowns he set a year ago. He's now on pace for 34 and 8 interceptions. Still a fantastic year. He's just raised the bar so much that this is less exciting. Then... Nobody really standing out now in the running game. I guess Sharkandrick West could end up with a lot of yards here just based on volume. Um, I think running back is something I'll have to address moving forward. Not sure that West or Kelly are long-term options. What did I sign Kelly to, by the way? How many years did I do that for? That was a two-year contract. Okay, not a big deal. It wasn't like a five. Then receiving. Corey Coleman leads us in yards. David Njoku, I guess only had a couple big games. But we have a really good receiving core. Adam Humphreys can't even get on the field to make many catches. Don Banks leading us in tackles yet again. And five sacks for Bradley Hayward. Four for Miles Garrett. That's surprising. And then only a couple interceptions lately. We have the 15th offense now, so still pretty average there. Fourth ranked defense. 17th in points scored, less than I'd like us to be. And then 7th in scoring defense. So that, that's just mixed up compared to where I thought we'd be. But we do lead the AFC North, which has become a two-team race. And I think next episode, I want to find a game for us to sit in on. I'm not sure which one yet. Dolphins, Ravens, what's the Dolphin record? Four and four. Not sure. Media question. At the halfway point, how far do you think this team can go? Uh, let's, let's pump the brakes a little bit. Dangerous game to start looking ahead. We have to make sure that... Oh, we gain nothing from winning. No upside. I don't like that. As you can tell, the finances are doing really well. Team revenue at our last home game looks like this. A profit of about $6 million. I want to see now, are we filling the stadium or not? So the suites, 2175 of 2900 Still some empty, expensive luxury boxes. The club seats, 2000 empty. Mezzanine, 5500 empty. An upper level, about... 3,500 more empty. So I feel like there's probably 10,000 tickets out there that are not selling. How about merchandise? How are we doing this year? We were selling Revis jerseys a year ago, so I know those same people need more jerseys this year. And we're selling Kaiser jerseys at the same rate almost as Anton Greenberry. They still are buying Jabril Peppers jerseys and Cody Kessler jerseys and David Njoku. We're selling the Kaiser football. Why are we doing that? Why isn't Anton Greenberry signing those things? Overall, we're still 25th in team value. We're only 28th in fan happiness. Are you kidding me? We're actually doing okay, and the fans are still not that happy about it. I guess stadium's not great. Staff's not great. 
We're doing well in concessions and merch, though, thanks to me lowering the prices. But still a long way to go. So that's going to end the fun for this episode. Thank you all for watching another episode of this Cleveland Browns rebuild. Please leave a like and leave a comment down below if you enjoyed the episode. Again, thank you to all of the new subscribers who have just joined the channel. It's been pretty incredible to watch this channel grow at the rate it has been since I launched the Browns rebuild in the first week of January. Much more to come. Not sure when this thing is going to end, but I'm really enjoying what we have here in this series. And I'm brainstorming more ideas of how I can do rebuilds in interesting fashions. Because there are many ways you can build a team. I can institute different rules, like the Ted Thompson challenge, where I don't sign any free agents who are over, like, $3 million or something like that. You know, there's stuff like that I could do. There's a whole world of possibilities between the games I could play, the challenges and whatnot. So I, I'm really happy that this rebuild thing is becoming a big thing on the channel. I'll see you guys soon in episode number 7 within a couple days, if not sooner. So, again, leave a like, subscribe, thank you for enjoying, and I'll see you next time. Have a great day.